Okay, let's try and code it up. Okay, so how are you gonna be doing this? So you have your variable a, and I'm just gonna be making it a list with some random numbers. Yeah, and uh, I'm gonna be saying 77 and 8. Okay, let's try and make this 423. Just so that like, you know, the highest number is right in the middle. Okay, <clears throat> so the very first thing is like, you know, we, when we would bring the theory bit, we see like, you know, will we be able to pull out one single largest number towards the end? In case we can do that, then it becomes kind of easy because we have already knocked down the logic and we just need to repeat it for n number of times where n is the number of elements in the list. Okay. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be just putting inside a lunch uh, function. So I'm going to be saying this is sorted to, okay. You can call it sorted one as well. No problem with that or whatever you maybe you want to, right. So this is passed and I'm just going to be calling this sorted to, okay. So the best practice is uh, to say if underscore underscore name underscore underscore is equal to, right underscore underscore main underscore underscore so i think most of you guys already know why this is the best practice because you know there are times when you might be importing stuff and like you know uh we won't go into that as of now so just believe in me whatever i'm writing so i'm just gonna be <coughs> calling well basically i could have just you know straight away called sorted to as well without writing this name and main but name is internal variable, so we are just checking that we are calling from the same file that we have our function in. Okay. Now we come to the logic bit. Okay. So, like we saw, every element has to be compared to the element next to it. Yeah. So that comparison has to go on for n number of elements, right? So we're gonna be saying for i n range, uh, which is n number of elements so the pick away is just to find out the length how long is your thing yeah your list and then what we're gonna be doing well we're just gonna be checking if another statement right we're gonna be checking if a i right and then we're gonna be checking if it is greater than a i plus one right so what do you do if this is the case then what do you do if this is the case, then all you need to do is you just basically going to be switching. Okay. So how does switching happen? So this is another notation for the switching. So you can create a temporary variable, but Python allows you to switch just like this. So you write first value, second value, which have, which have to be interchanged. So, and then you reverse the order by writing towards the other, other side of the equal to. So basically you're just going to be writing, uh, I plus one and then uh, you're gonna be writing a i yeah so switching is done so this is how switching is done okay and then you can leave the pass or you can just like you know take it away now the thing is just pause the video for a moment and think what's gonna happen in case if we pressed play now if we run it what's gonna happen well, the thing that's going to happen is uh, because we are going from for i in range length of a, yeah, length of a is how many elements do we have? Well, basically, we have one moment, we have one, two, three, seven elements, right? We have seven elements. Now, in case we are going from i in range and then length of a is 7 so it's going to go to 7 and then it's going to check if a of 7 is greater than a of 8 if there is no 8th position right so it's going to throw you an error so you're going outside the indexing uh, in case if you don't believe me let me let me just play it for you list index out of range so we need to take care of that and how exactly do we do that well basically you know in case if you're comparing 77 with 8 then 8 is being compared already right so the last item is being taken care of so all you need to do is so you just say minus 1 here yeah you have to be very critical about the 
uh, towards the end of the indexing. You never want to see this kind of error. And uh, the quicker you learn, the better it is. You're not going to be making many mistakes, like, you know, thereafter. And it's not even about making mistakes. It's just like, you know, these kind of things, like, they are hard to debug. So I just advise you to just, you know, keep a proper map on this one. And now in case if I play, yeah, and now we haven't really printed anything. Okay, so how we do that? So we are still inside the if loop and now we are inside the for loop. We don't want to print it over and over again. Okay, so you can after every iteration. Okay, but let's just print it here. Okay, let's just print it here. So what are you gonna be printing? Printing A. Okay, so what after every iteration you're gonna be having this stuff, right? So you see your four. So for the first iteration, you were not near 423. In the second iteration, you were not near 423. And the third iteration, you were at 423. 423 was greater, so it moved on to this side. And then fourth iteration, it moved on to the other side, and then that's how you bubbled it out. Okay. Well, this was just for one element, mind you, but you need to do it for like all of them. So how are you gonna be doing? Well, basically you just need to keep everything, all this which I've highlighted, you have to keep everything inside a loop. And that loop is gonna be running over for n number of times and where n is your number of elements, right? So you basically, so once you've selected all of these, yeah, so you just, just throw a tab on it, yeah? So why throwing a tab on it? I could have written everything, but uh, we won't do that. So for, I'm gonna say for J, in range of length of a yeah again we have to do we don't want to like you know go out of bounds so we do that and then after the first first iteration so after after you have you have bubbled out first one element then you don't really have to go on to the whole length yeah so which is why so you don't you don't really have to after you have this one is the internal loop okay so after one internal loop your this last element is sorted so you don't want to go until there so you rather for the next loop you just want to pick these number of elements okay and for the very next one you just pick one one lesser than this one so you're going to be picking this yeah so this is one internal loop so in one internal loop all this is happening so basically what you're going to be doing so you're going to be saying okay you know what just delete this yeah so whatever number of things you have already sorted so just delete those not delete basically and just you know we don't have to go there you can let me let me just show you so we're gonna be now for every internal loop and outer loop you're gonna be seeing what's happening okay so this is your final list okay this is your final list. So this is in sorted order, right? And in case if you wanted to take away J as well, even then nothing would have changed. It would have still stayed the same, but this program, this run is not as efficient as last time. So this is basically what you need to take care of. So I hope uh, I have made myself clear as far as bubble sorting is concerned. So you just, you just, if you know how to sort one element, like you know how to bubble out one element, if you can take it towards the end, then the rest of the things are pretty easy. You just like, you know, do it for n elements basically. So for one element, you have to do all this because you have to do switches. So you have to be inside the internal loop. And for n number of elements, if you want to sort them out, then you have to put another loop. So which is why most of the sorting algorithms, you'll find they are in nested looping because you just can't do with one loop. So that's pretty much it. And I hope I've made myself clear. Thank you so much. See you in the next one.